um, if anybody else needs admitting, hopefully, um, Diana, you'd be able to do that um, if possible. Um, if that's OK, lovely. Yeah, definitely. OK, so let me share my screen and um, we will get the, pres oh, the presentation up. There we are. And we will go from the start. OK, so hopefully everyone can see that it can. Is that OK with everybody? Um, I'll just pop that down there. So um, hello, everyone. My name is Claire Collett. You probably if you don't already know me, but um, I'm an occupational therapist and I work for the technology enabled care team at Dorset Council. So um, this uh, oh, next <laughs> I got to find my little button. Where's my ah, there it is there. Um, so basically this session, um, hopefully, you know, it's only a short session today um, and it's for um, technology and people who are carers. Um, and, and if any staff uh, have joined, um, it might also be uh, maybe a sort of relearning of a few things or just sort of um, hearing about some new things possibly. But thank you for all coming along. So. We know that obviously there's a huge toll um, on the health and well-being of, of carers, um, you know, who are carrying out caring duties and smart technology can work alongside human carers to, um, you know, share the burden. And that could be doing anything from operating music systems and telephones to obviously those traditional alerts in the case of a fall. And there are many different types of technology out there to help people. And uh, you might think, you know, there's some uh, smart voice assistants like Alexa. Um, luckily, I haven't got one in the room, so she's not going to pipe up. <laughs> and um, there's lots of, you know, digital devices that are um, coming on board and they really can help people caring for people with a variety of different conditions and needs. So in the session today, we're going to look at some traditional devices and then some newer innovative ones. Um, at any time, if anybody needs to um, just ask a question, then um, Diana, if you're able to um, give me a shout because I can't see hands or or anything. So um, if anybody does want to, you know, ask anything as we're going along, it's it's very we have a very relaxed sort of session. So no, no problems at all. So the first um, one I want to talk about is the traditional alerting devices. So this could be at home. And that might be sort of helping to manage people's personal risks, such as falls or maybe if they're having or experiencing memory loss. Also, environmental risks in the home. The, the typical ones are fire, flood, maybe carbon monoxide. And then there might be some uh, traditional devices to help people out and about. So again, personal risks, falls while we're out and about walking, becoming lost or, or maybe just contacting people for help. Now, if we delve a little bit deeper into people um, who might fall and the technology that can support them, and this may be very, um, or, you know, you may know all about this already. Uh, so it's really around neck or worn or wrist worn fall detectors that either link to a, a, a 24 hour monitoring centre or they could link to yourself if you have a mobile phone and your loved ones at home. There are bed and chair sensors. Again, that's useful for at night time, uh, the bed chair sensor. Um, again, linked to a monitoring centre or can just alert you in your own home. And then there's the fall detection if someone's out and about. And, and equally, um, as I said before, it can be linked to your own mobile phone or that 24 hour monitoring centre. There's lots of technology can, that can support um, your loved ones with memory loss in, you know, at home. And often we all start doing written reminders. You know, we might do laminate posters or, or scribble notes and things. And when they're, they're no longer working, it might be time to look at maybe devices that could announce a message. And that could either be verbally or visually um, or both. And it could be simple things that 
can help someone just to remember to, to, to remind them to have a drink, um, maybe take their tablets. Um, so it's it's really important if, if you're out and about during the day or um, you just want something to support you, um, then these sort of devices can help. And there's lots of devices as well that can um, actually specific ones that can help people take their medication as well. And you'll see some of the pictures below there. When we're looking at environmental risks, um, there's things like linked products that provide you with reassurance while you're out and about. So the traditional smoke alarm, that can be linked to a care line. Uh, there are heat sensors and they can have a, a dual purpose. So they could be used to detect if, you know, it's gone really cold. So if someone's turned the heating off, perhaps while you're out, or maybe if it gets too hot, like um, something's been left on the cooker uh, and there might be a, a fire. And obviously the smoke alarm would also pick that up. Those types of products are always linked to a care line. There is obviously a hidden risk with carbon monoxide as well, sometimes from old sort of boilers and heating systems. So again, if they've not been properly checked or maintained, again, linking those to the care line can help. The care line centre staff would normally call you on your mobile if you're out and about and say, for instance, your loved one's at home or, or if you're at work or something, and they can call the emergency services for you if you're not able to get back home quickly. Um, so often what we might consider is maybe having a key safe so that those emergency services can can get at quick access. A lot of times when I talk to people who are looking after loved ones, um, they say that their loved one is is leaving the home. And one of the things really we like to sort of look at is can we alert a carer, you know, you a carer to um, somebody leaving the the door, the front by the front door. So often there are door sensors um, that can either link to a pager that you would have in your pocket or clip to your clothing. Or if you're out during the day or you've gone out for a couple of hours and your loved one's at home alone, then again, it can link to the care line and the care line would let you know. But there are things that you could possibly try that may help by um, giving someone a reminder message. So there's some automatic um, motion sensor uh, devices that can have a, a voice, your voice, that could come out to say, you know, don't go out without checking or, you know, come back inside. And obviously, if those don't work, um, then it may be time to, to really consider having a GPS tracker. And they are uh, generally suitable for people with um, early stages of dementia, mild memory loss. Um, often when the, the people have got to quite an advanced um, stage of dementia, it's not that, you know, it's not worth trying, but um, it's sometimes more difficult at that stage. Um, people might not want to wear their tracker or their device. So it's it's very individual thing. So here is a selection of some of the, the latest GPS trackers that are out there. And a lot of the trackers now have this fall detection. So if you are worried about your loved one going out and um, on their walk, you know, maybe you, you, it's safe for them to go for a walk, but having a tracker on makes you be, be more reassured that if they did get lost, um, you know, you'd be able to find them. The other thing you can set up is uh, uh, what we call a geo fence or a geo zone and that's a virtual zone that is set up and as soon as that person goes through that sort of uh, line so to speak it will alert you so it may be safe for your loved one to go uh, um, you know to the shop and back but if it's further than that and that might mean that they might get more confused and lost then the geo fence can help and it can just tell you that they've gone through that virtual zone so there's lots of different um, GPS trackers now. We've got watches that, you know, hopefully look uh, a bit normal nowadays. We've got little um, items that can go on a, a, a chain or a lanyard. We've even got um, trackers that can go in shoes, the smart soles at the top. So there's a wide variety. So it's it's um, it's best to sort of look at what the individual would, would be able to have and tolerate and um, 
so we you know what not one tracker suits everyone so just to remind you really you know how can it help you if you're at home and you need to be alerted when your loved one needs you or if you need to know if your loved one's up and about then the, the types of equipment you see there in the pictures can really help so we've got bed and chair sensors uh, some of those can be set up with a delay. So if you felt that, well, I, my loved one can get up in the night and go to the toilet, but I'd like to know if they don't come back to bed, then you can set a delay up. Sometimes it could be 15 minutes or 30 minutes, and then you'd get an alarm on your pager to say that your loved one hasn't come back to bed. And they can be quite useful for when maybe you sleep in separate rooms. Um, and there are also floor mats, uh, if the bed sensors aren't suitable, there are um, floor to floor, person to person pages, sorry. And um, that is if perhaps your loved one is able to um, cognitively, you know, maybe alert you, but can't physically get up and alert you. So, um, again, all very simple equipment. Mainly people worry that if they have, um, maybe they have a hearing impairment themselves and they, they think, well, what if I don't hear my loved one getting up or, li or leaving the home? And there are things that can link to some of the sensors. So uh, if you go to sleep at night and maybe you have hearing aids and you take them out, then there's a special vibrating pillow alert that connects to the um, pager and it would that would definitely wake you up if you if you're worried that you won't um, hear your loved one and there are pages that that vibrate specifically but all of the person to person pages and the and the bed and chair sensor pages and door sensor pages the the pages themselves you can have it to vibrate only uh, or you can have vibrate and an audible sound at the same time. So it's all very bespoke to what you feel you need. So if you're not at home, um, as I mentioned before, the, the, the traditional sort of linked um, care line or lifeline products, um, that, that goes through to a, a monitoring centre and there's lots of skilled people at the, the centre and they would call you if anything happened to your loved one at home. But they can, as I say, r raise that call to the emergency services if needed. And the, the types of things that can be linked to the care line are PIR sensors. So that picks up activity in a room or a specific place in the house. The door sensor at the front door or back door, um, fall detectors. So if your loved one was at risk of having a fall and you didn't think they could press their pendant, then the fall detector would go off automatically. And again, the environmental sensors like the smoke detectors. There are other options um, and, you know, there are things like activity monitoring systems. These don't need the Internet, which is great. Um, so you, a variety of sensors can be put in rooms around your home and you would get you can set up um, certain alerts and that alert would come through to your mobile phone. So it send you a text or an email and uh, that some people do have these in their homes and um, sometimes they are more used when maybe you've got your loved one is quite a distance away or maybe they live on their own and you're a son or your daughter and you live sort of up the other end of the country or somewhere and you just want to know that mum or dad are sort of um, up and about and they're they're going around the home as usual. Um, there are video cameras as well and they do need the internet though. And mostly um, what we would say with video cameras is they're not to be put in rooms where there's personal care being undertaken. So bathrooms, toilets, bedrooms. But if you're looking at putting one in a hallway or in a in a lounge, maybe um, that that's suitable. And as long as you've you have if you if you've asked the person, you, you know, if that's OK, if they haven't got capacity to consent to that, then you must make that decision whether it's in their best interests. Um, so most of the products here would need a smartphone or you would need an email to be able to sort of have access to see what's going on, really. So there are lots of new technology out there. So um, we know in, in our homes, some people's homes, there are smart thermostats and voice controlled lighting in the home. And, and they're, you know, 
out there for everyone. But for carers, they can be quite life changing. So it can give you peace of mind and, and also give some independence to the person you care for. Um, a great example of everyday technologies that's um, out, out there is um, the Amazon Alexa. So being able to say this is your loved one, being able to say, Alexa, turn on the lights or Alexa, call my wife or husband, son, daughter, um, turn on the music, you know, their favourite music can give them back some control and independence. And some of the items you'll see there are the uh, Amazon Echo Show, which is the one with the picture and you can do video calling through that one or the dot, um, the little round one with the time. Um, again, you can still do phone calls through that. You just can't see the person. And then you, we've got a smart plug there, which is um, able to turn the light on. So, and people perhaps with physical disabilities um, maybe feel more empowered with, with products like this because they can, they don't have to ask their loved one to, to or their carers to do it for them. Often, sometimes we get told about, you know, how do I keep, how could I keep my loved one occupied? Um, and um, because it, it is it is stressful keeping, you know, looking after someone at home. And there are things out there nowadays, um, digital technology to help um, with that. So there are easy to use radios and TV controls. There are devices that enable video calling so they can actually, you know, if you have grandchildren or um, anybody, any other family that are, doesn't matter where they are in the world, they can have a video call. And there's some really easy use digital tablets um, nowadays. So it um, doesn't have to feel scary. There are ones for people with all different abilities. So that's, um, and, and that's something we've been sort of trialing in the council as well. This year, we've been looking at some of these video calling devices where people couldn't attend their day centres um, early at the early start of the year when we had lockdown. I think that a lot of people think that, well, is, is technology going to take away that human element? And we hear that you know, this this negativity, um, but it, it's an enabler. It, and if we think of it in that way, it, it doesn't have to reduce human contact. It can actually make it more meaningful. So, for instance, if, if someone has access to devices such as fall detection sensors and cameras, maybe the son or the daughter can know that their mum or dad is OK. And then when they have their usual phone call or meet up, that can, in, I know this is, I do this with my own father, you know, I, I, I nag him about different things, but actually it's more meaningful to have a proper conversation, isn't it? So that's where um, technology is that enabler um, for people. So it doesn't have to be seen as negative. Where can you sort of source technology nowadays? So at the council, um, we do provide some technology. So if you are ever interested in finding out what could help you, then um, our amazing adult access team are there to give advice and support and to help signpost you. But if you have access to the internet, we've also got the Our Dorset website and we've got a technology uh, area and it's got a a technology house where you can have a little look around and, and each room in the property and see what would be helpful. But we've also got our tech lounge uh, and that's in County Hall. And if you're able to have a, a virtual appointment, if you've got a, a, a device that could allow enable that, we can do virtual appointments and we can also do in-person appointments now that restrictions have been lifted. So if you are interested in having a an appointment at the tech lounge, do email that um, email address there or telephone the adult access team and tell them you're interested in an appointment at the tech lounge and they will contact me and let me know your telephone and contact details and I'll be in touch and we'll arrange a time for you to come in and we can have a chat about what your specific needs are and how, how technology might be able to help you and your loved one. So I did say it was quite a, um, it wouldn't be too long. Um, we've got about 10 minutes and um, perhaps now we could maybe just ask if anyone's got any questions, I will stop sharing my screen. 
Oh, hello, everyone. More people have joined. <laughs> so um, if there's any um, anything that anyone wants to sort of chat about or chat about experiences that they've had so far um, in, in using technology for caring, then please do say. Um, but uh, I'm not sure if we've had we've got any um, carers online or I think Ken at your you sound like you might be a gentleman that's looking after somebody um, you you I think you might have your you're on mute oh hello there how oh, nice to see you <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes uh, I look after my sister uh, who's right. no communication so this is where I'm sort of interested but I must admit I've never really found any technological stuff to actually for her to work she doesn't seem to be interested in that uh, okay um, presence she's downstairs are uh, looking at dvds and tv so really that's right. uh, because of the day center sort of situation that's one of her main sort of outcomes now I, it, it's always i've always felt she should have some way of controlling it but that's never yeah. really come to pass well i mean there are we there isn't just obviously i mean uh, the the health services actually if she has any um physical difficulties in accessing um or if she doesn't have any speech for instance then the environmental control team um they actually look will assess and provide people with uh, you know extra gadgets um to help people access technology um better so um we can you know if you want to contact me Ken you know we can always point you in the direction of of the environmental control team um, or you might might need to go via your um, if your sister's got any health or social care professionals involved with her um, she they could contact them on her behalf maybe yeah. um, we're from BCP so I'm not sure if that really applies <laughs> No, uh, well, BCP, um, the, the environmental control team cover Dorset, Hampshire and the Isle of Wight. So it might be worth contacting um, the BCP uh, council and asking, you know, how would you, how would the environmental control team, how can you get a referral to them for your sister? I've never heard of them before, so that's a good positive. Yes, good. Uh, yeah, I will we'll say the other thing is, is being part of our, our life sort of during lockdown has been Zoom from the day centre. Ah, oh, yes, brilliant. Yeah, I think it, it's really come last year did actually open up a lot more people's worlds to the digital side of things, didn't it? And um, I think it's um, a lot more people, you know, purchased digital technology. Um, I know, for, for instance, our digital champions were very busy in the council helping people um, and there's some amazing charities such as AbilityNet. They can help people with um, computers. They have volunteers that um, will help you with all the smart technology nowadays, even if it's setting up and installing things in their own home. So AbilityNet, um, you could go on their website and you can request for a, vo uh, a volunteer to help. And it could be something to do with a smartphone or it could be something to do with a laptop or a tablet. And they're very they can help and, and send somebody around to or, or do it over the phone, whatever's easiest, really. And to give, give, give parts and connect the thumbs up. This morning we had an out on the bike session. Oh, um, lovely. Which was basically at Branksome. And uh, uh, it's sort of people joined in saying what they knew about the area. So, oh, right. Oh, lovely. Oh, that's. Yeah. That's lovely. And it, it is about getting the, the, you know, the community connected, isn't it? And people can connect through the community in a digital way. Um, even the libraries nowadays, they've got lots of digital content online. Um, so it is, you know, if, if a lot of people think um, it is just about going into a library nowadays and getting a book out, but you can actually do it online. You can get a audible book through the um, digital resources the libraries have. So, and there's some some of the great organisations in Dorset now um, have got some great online content, you know, webcams and things like that. To, to, I mean, I know I know when it when we first had the lockdown last year um, in March, uh, end of March, 
I remember <laughs> looking at sort of zoo webcams just for, you know, interest to see what and all over across the world, you know. So I think, you know, the, this is where things like laptops and tablets and, and iPads have helped people see another side of, of um, things really, haven't they? So, um, uh, but it's good to hear what's, what you're doing and down, down your way, Ken. <laughs> Thank you. So I don't know if anyone's got any other questions, but um, um, you know, hopefully it's given. It, this is a, a it's been a brief sort of overview. There's so much more um, out there, and um, in, if you work for the council, you know I'm always contactable. Um, and um, but if if there's nothing else, we'll if nobody else has got any more questions, we'll we'll leave it there. Um, and lovely to meet you, Ken. And um, and if if you ever want to come to the tech lounge, you're also welcome to come for an appointment. <laughs> if you look on the Al Dorset website, you can see how um, you can make uh, an appointment there. And there's also a video about the tech lounge on the Al Dorset website as well. So if you just um, email, uh, just Google or not Google, put in the search bar um, tech lounge Dor and it Dor will help. Sorry. That... Yeah, it's our Dorset website, um, but um, we, you know, you're very welcome if if you you feel that there's some technology that might help you and, you, and your sister, um, then, you know, you're very welcome to come to the Tech Lounge. We It's by appointment only, so um, e there's an email as well, so you can sort of see if, if there's anything out there. So, um, it's just, I think sometimes it's much more personal than perhaps going to um, places like Curry's and, you know, the Amazon and things. Other areas are available. So, <laughs> okay. So, um, hopefully, um, thank you, everyone. I will let you go and uh, got five minutes to go and make a cup of tea before whatever we're doing next at half past three. <laughs>